The pillars of the pillars of Druidry. Okay, so the, the first premise, I guess, is is a, is a love of the earth. And the fact that we don't actually need dogma. That's why it's so interesting to hear Peter talking about Christianity not being a belief system. Druidry isn't a belief system as well. We can actually function very well in a spiritual sense, I believe, yeah. and an intellectual sense without, without having a lot of beliefs. But generally, within Druidry, there's this, this sense that the earth and the natural world is sacred, deserves respect, deserves reverence, and there is something more, which is where the materialism versus spiritualism debate comes in, that it's not just what we see with our naked eyes, as it were, but that somehow there is a spiritual world, there is another world, there is a life after death. Those are the sort of primary orientations, I guess you say, you'd say. And then in terms of actual practice, what we do, we celebrate the festivals, so the solstices, the equinoxes, we, te we try to get outdoors in our uh, celebrations, as it were, and to tune ourselves to the natural world. Some people uh, have dead dolls, so again, there's no dogma, you see. So some people are atheistic druids, believing that the idea of a deity doesn't kind of work for them. Other, people's are other people are polytheistic or pantheistic or monotheistic. There's a whole range of approaches. I think that's absolutely right. I think it is who actually propagates and puts the public relations behind those types of belief systems and what they have to gain from that. I'm not being cynical, I'm being realistic. And really, we're at a stage, human, human being is at a stage now where the belief systems that we have are actually destroying the home that we inhabit. So we need to really have a very big think as soon as possible. Mark, I, I've got a question for you. Why, why do you think it is that um, the church is attacked so viciously, so often, by so many journalists, so many writers. Why do you think that's come about? Um, it, it depends which country you go to, because in many countries uh, that isn't the case. Um, you look at Colombia, um, it's on the contrary. Um, particularly in the UK, um, we were talking earlier about some of the stances we have. I, I take it back to myself. So I go to a, an area where I, I deliver drug education talks to children, to young people, I'll go into a community group, I'll go into prisons, wherever I can go I will talk to someone. If I go into an area and educate everybody about the truth about drugs so they no longer want to take street drugs, the, the three or four drug dealers from that area, they're going to have no, they're going to make, their business has now been taken away. They, they're not going to earn their money. So it's kind of, they would then try and stop me from doing that drug education, right? So they might spread rumours, they might physically attack me, whatever they might do to stop me stopping people taking drugs so they earn their business. The Church of Scientology has a massive campaign to raise awareness of the abuses in the mental health field. And it's been something um, which we've been championing since 1969. You, you talked earlier about a class action yeah. law sort yeah, yeah. in the US. Well, there's one, I mean, uh, there's a, a perfect example. We've been, uh, the church and many other organizations that we work with have been talking about um, the men behind the Holocaust. And for years, we, w we were saying how psychiatrists, certain psychiatrists, were the men behind the Holocaust. We were absolutely annihilated for that, as well as for saying that, or even suggesting that, as well as other groups that we affiliate ourselves with in that area. Until last year, when the head of the German Psychiatric Association came out, admitted that psychiatry were behind the techniques used in the Holocaust, and apologized for them. That's shocking. But that's, that's just an example, and you know, it's not just the Church of Scientology to do this. There are many organizations in a secular social betterment aspect that want to improve these rotten spots in society but when you do that you come up against money you come up against vested interests and that is something that we have come up against and you know it's not just us it's not the case uh, you're, what you say is, is, is totally how i think as well and and what the church believes we are not i the point is to find abuse in the mental health field women are still raped people are still beaten people are still chained and put in cages in psychiatric care we're not, I don't, I'm not interested in, in 
the people that do the good work, that do help people, they are sti there, there are people like that in the field as well, but you know, we're interested in stopping the abuse. And that's the cases that we want to find and we, huh? The, the, the medication, yeah, based on the fact that um, if, if it's based on a chemical imbalance in the brain, which there is no scientific evidence that there is such a thing. Of the, the psychoactive mind altering drugs, that is opposed by the church. But not, not the people, not the doctors that would prescribe them, it's the, the people who create the business by making those drugs, by a show of hands, that's how they're, that's how they're introduced. You don't have a, have a mental illness which they create a drug to deal with that illness. There are drugs, hundreds of drugs that are lined up on the shelves. An illness comes along and they find labels to then associate those drugs with. There is no such a, a target. I just want to take up that, okay. that, that gentleman's question is, in terms of the church's stance on, on gay people, we don't have a stance. Scientology is about man as a spiritual being. It's not about their sexual orientation, gender, male or female. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of, you know, twisting and distortion of what Aaron Hubbard said. So, there is nothing in that. I, I've been incredibly impressed. I, I think... The path that religions take, Christianity was a cult 2,000 years ago. And I think you know, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, these have all begun, all the major religions that we see, Buddhism, have all begun as minority religions, uh, which all, all of those religions suffered immense persecution. It is a dreadful mirror image of human beings that we tend to coagulate around something which we think we're going to be safe with. We're going to be on the right side. So let's stick with these people and bash these ones on the head. Uh, this has been going on since the year dot. And frankly, we should be wise enough now not to behave in that fashion. <coughs> Secondly, the Jain religion uh, I encountered in India, uh, which um, has a policy of non-violence to all, to all life. This is an extraordinary thing to behold. It is a religion for the 21st to the 22nd century. Um, the mainstream religions have an inordinate amount to learn from those religions which are regarded as being on the edge. Scientology, Jainism, um, the perspective, the Druid's perspective, especially in relation to the environment. Whether they can actually, um, whether they can actually open their hearts to that is another matter. Okay, I think if I could uh, just, yes. just, just say one thing. I think a really a couple of you, Hamish, and, and, and somebody else also mentioned how they were spiritual but not religious. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the stats, something really interesting is happening, in, yeah. in particularly in the States as well, yeah. is the SBNR category, which is the spiritual but not religious person, is, is getting bigger. Yeah. More and more people are saying, oh, religion, yeah, I'm not so interested in that. But I'm a spiritual being, I recognize that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, for me, is the way of the future. There exactly. may be big faiths, there may be boutique faiths, uh, whatever that, but the, the, the category of people who are spiritual and then who feed, I mean, I think the interesting thing now is we're not obliged to follow any religion, let's say in this country, but we can take great inspiration from Christianity, from Sufism, from Buddhism, from Jainism, and so on, and in a sense, walk our own path with our own discrimination towards what we think are the right values. I think the only way that's going to happen is, is that Christianity has probably reached a point in this country and in the West where it's going to have to disentangle itself from the mechanisms of power and government. I don't see uh, any other way forward. Um, I think it's going to have to grow up, become democratically uh, accountable, uh, and really is a movement that will then, I think, emerge from, from, from the ground upwards rather than from the top downwards. Until that happens, and I hope with all my heart that it does, we will be languishing where we are for the time being. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our speakers.